Well hey guys, it's Michael here. And this video I put together today is just basically going over non-power tools for DIYers that are getting started in their home shop. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, I'm going to put a link to a video I did recently, six affordable tools to get you started in metal fabrication. That whole video covered six power tools that I think are essential and the whole package will cost you about 600 bucks to get you cutting and welding. So anyways, this is a sequel to it, going over non-power tools in this one, covering measuring devices, punches, lots of different things from clamps and all kinds of things in between. So if you guys are interested in the video, stick around and check it out. All right, you guys, this is the first grouping of tools. We can kind of sum it up as measuring devices and leveling and marking devices, basically Sharpies and things. Anyways, we're going to start off with this little tool. I find this to be so valuable for working on projects around here. It's a magnetic level. But this one actually has very strong magnets in it. If you go to the store, I think I spent about 20 bucks at Home Depot for something like this. Look them over, check something metal around there because some of these welding levels have such crappy little magnets in them. They're like kind of a grayish color magnet and they will barely hold onto surfaces. This thing is rugged. It's dropped on the floor so many times. It's still very accurate and it will give you all kinds of different. You can measure 45s. You can measure vertical, horizontal. It's just a really good little level and it's definitely sturdy. It's a solid one. Now this is just a basic two foot carpenter's level. This is some of these tools you guys are gonna have in your shop already. It's gonna cross over from woodworking to metal. I use this for leveling up some surfaces like tabletops and things. Um, angle finders, these are super helpful for uh, finding certain angles and matching it. You can put it up to another workpiece, lock it down and you can transfer this to something else. Super useful, these are like four bucks. This is something I wouldn't jump out and get, but I've been using it a lot recently with my CNC table. Um, this is a digital angle finder, so you can move it in different degrees and figure out exactly what that degree is. This has been like super useful with the CNC table. Simple rafter square. These can be purchased for around four or five bucks. I've had this one for quite a few years, and I use it for tack when I'm tack welding stuff to make sure stuff is uh, square. Works really, really well. And this combination square is an amazing tool for layout. I use it all the time. Most people might not know about this, but they have a little scribe in the tail section of it for scribing your parts. But anyways, there's so many useful, useful things that this thing can do. It can measure 45s and 90s. You can check square. You can also set it to your exact height, like that's two inches, and you can go along a piece of metal and scribe it underneath. Uh, I just use it a lot for laying out parts and hole patterns and things like that. It's a super useful tool. This one I've had for probably 10 years around here. It's still holding up solid. Buy a decent one if you can. I think it's going to set you back 15 to 20 bucks. Not that expensive. <clears throat> Paint marker, good to have one of those around your shop. Here's a little silver drawing welding pencil here. And Sharpies, they're a must around a shop. A little scribe is always good. If you can make a Sharpie mark, you can sometimes scribe to the center of it and take off the Sharpie mark. And it's just kind of nice for working out layouts and scribing metal. And here is a center punch. If you do your layout and mark it out, you can take a metal punch and hit it with a hammer or you can just use one of these. They work pretty good. I think that's around $10. Now we're going to move on to these. I use these uh, digital calipers all the time. Two different grades I have here. This one I got on sale from Harbor Freight for about 15 or 10 bucks. And it's okay. It's not really the highest quality. This one is much better. I think I got it from, I think, Home Depot for about 29 bucks. I realized recently it's got a glass cover on it. But anyways, this one I picked up a while back here, and I just the quality and the feel of it's not very good. Of course, it's like 10 to 15 dollars. But this little lock screw stripped out instantly. These are both fractional, which is nice. They have fractions, millimeters, and thousandths. If you're working on a project that has metric and standard on it. It's kind of nice because you can check a hole size in millimeters and push the button and shuttle over to thousandths of an inch or fractions and you can get that equivalent of fraction. So it's a pretty helpful thing to have around. I like these a lot more. They're much better quality. The lockout never stripped out. I've had them for probably five years and they've been holding up rock solid. They're really good. So I'd recommend if you're going to get one of these, just pay a little bit more. Uh, it's just kind of a nicer tool to have and you can do a lot of nice little things with these guys You can mark out layouts and you can scribe down the sides of things. I Use them like that. They seem to hold up pretty well Anyways, a lot of them have this little tail stock on here so you can measure depth of inside the holes and you can measure inside of certain locations like this and You can measure outside locations Anyways these are definitely useful to have around. If you're drilling, tapping things, you can check out your drill bits and all that stuff. Super useful to have, so I'd recommend getting a pair. 
All right, now that we got measuring devices and things like that covered, let's get on to drilling and tapping. If you're doing metal working, you're gonna definitely have to uh, drill some holes and cut some threads. So we got a tap and die set here. Keep in mind, I covered some drill bits and things like that in the last video, but I wanna go over this in a little more detail. Cheapo set, 12 to 15 bucks. You're gonna break some, they're not the nicest, but they actually do work. Uh, a little bit better set, and you're gonna break them. A lot more expensive. 50, 60 bucks, and you're gonna break them, but they work. I got this tap set for about 40 bucks, I think, with a coupon at Harbor Freight, and I've been pleased with it. It's a little metric and standard tap. I have a drawer full of mixed taps and drill bits in them. You never have the right size. You might have a quarter 20, a three eighths here and there, but you don't have all the sizes. This doesn't have all the sizes either, but it's got a hell of a lot more than my junk drawer of taps. I haven't broken one yet. Let's hope it stays that way. But for 40 bucks, I was really impressed with this thing. It's actually been working pretty good for just drill and tapping. And you got the die set here too, so you can cut you know, external threads or internal threads. So I'd recommend get a tap set, get some drill bits. Basic things, files. This is a triangle file. It's got three sides to it, flat file. Now, you guys probably already know this, but files are kind of one directional. When you're filing, you want to file with it you don't want to go back and forth back and forth that will dull your files so you want to only cut in the pushing direction with the file so that's one thing to keep in mind they'll make you last a lot longer uh we covered scribes and center punches here's a few other punches i don't have a hammer included in here but i'm sure you guys have a hammer around your place so little center punches for marking the locations we're going to drill it makes it a lot easier to make sure you actually drill on that location if you take a punch hit it first there you're good to go some little uh, chisels, metal chisels are kind of nice for marking things and cutting things and stuff like that. A uh, die grinder, it's not a power tool, it still runs off of air, but it's not a plug-in power tool. But I'm going to throw it in here anyway. So I got a little die grinder here with a little carbide bit. These carbide bits are not cheap, about 20 bucks a bit. But they're kind of nice for getting in, opening out internal holes if you need to. If you can't drill it for some reason, you got to grind through a little bit of a uh, weld or anything like that. You can grind this out with it. It works really well for just fine, kind of getting in close, small areas. And step bits, I think we covered that in the last video. They're pretty useful. My recommendation is because that front point on these bits are actually gonna be doing most of the cutting if you just use them to start off and cut through all your plates. I highly recommend if you're gonna drill a lot of holes with these things, you just start off with a cheaper bit, like an eighth inch to do your pilot hole and let these do the cutting on the bigger sizes so you're not starting off your hole every time with that tip because once that tip gets dull, it's harder and harder to cut with them. I got a nice little carbide countersink. They're kind of nice to have around as well. All right, got these tools covered. We're gonna move on to clamping next. All right, you guys, if you're doing a lot of welding, you definitely need to clamp your pieces. The more you hold your pieces together solid when you're welding them, the less warping and bending you're gonna have. So you'd be amazed you have something perfectly 90 you have it sitting there, you do some tack welds on it before you know it, the thing's bent out of shape. So it's very important to uh, clamp your work really well. And there's a wide range of clamps I'm going to cover here. We're going to start off with a few basics. Simple C clamps, they're a few bucks a clamp and they hold stuff okay. Sometimes they get into certain locations. They're just slow because you got to thread them all the way in and all the way out. But they're nice to have a few of these on your shelf. They're not going to cost you much and they're helpful sometimes. These guys you can get for Harbor, from Harbor Freight for like 3 to $4. They have a wide range of sizes. They're a little lighter duty than these welding clamps, but I think they're in the woodworking section. But they work really well, especially for the price, and you're not going to break the bank. You know, you can get a whole bunch of these for the price of one of these. So uh, I use them around sometimes because sometimes you're working on small work and you don't want a heavy clamp pulling the small work around, or you're fitting in a small location and that's all you actually really want to have in there. So they're useful to have. I would definitely recommend at least four of these things on your shelf. And this clamp I picked up from Harbor Freight, a set of these a while back. I think individually they're about 15, 16 bucks originally. They're okay. They work pretty good. They're nice to have a nice sturdy clamp, but you can see these ones I picked up on sale for about the same price. I think they regularly sell for about 20 bucks harbor freight but you can see they've definitely beefed them up over the years nice they've come out with the actual upgrade on their clamps are pretty solid now for the price uh, over here there's some little sheet metal clamps I picked these up from harbor freight you can get a, I don't know six or eight pack for eight or ten dollars I don't use them that often to be honest with you guys but here's the usefulness of them if you're doing a lot of sheet metal work it's probably useful for you. you're doing body panels on cars but here's the clamp set up on here this is some eighth inch aluminum and you can uh, weld your seam and you just loosen this and you can pop this little pin out and they come out of there. 
and it leaves a nice little gap to fill in there too so those are pretty helpful now these i came across a few months ago and they're super useful i'll put links for some of these tools down here below like this bigger welding clamp and some of these magnetic uh, hold downs I think I got this four pack for around 20 bucks on Amazon. So look in the description, there'll be links to some of these tools in there. This is a four pack that got super strong magnets in all different sizes. They're for positioning metal at odd angles and stuff. They're very strong. They work really well if you're trying to hang like, I've been working on the articulating uh, mini dump truck that I've been building. If you guys are familiar with my channel, you've been seeing it. These have been coming in handy for holding metal at 45s and little brackets. They're super useful. It comes with a bigger set and a smaller set. I'd highly recommend these. It's just so nice because sometimes you don't have four or five arms to work with. So anyways, pick up a set of these. This one I picked up recently. It's pretty good. I wouldn't probably buy it as the first set. I'd buy that four set first. But this is uh, about 20 bucks, around 22, something like that. I'll put a link for this one as well. This just holds things at true 90s. You can adjust a little bit and it's actually really strong. Holds little brackets on frames and things like that really well. Move on to here. This is a drill clamp but you can pick them up at Harbor Freight for like 14 bucks. If you guys are familiar with this video, I'll put a link up here. I modified one of these things to make a uh, ring roller out of, and I needed a heavy duty ring roller, so I bought one of these clamps for 14 bucks. Here's the link right up here to the video, and it actually turned out really well. But they're kind of nice for a $14 clamp. Sometimes they're nice just to clamp onto your table and do some drilling or grinding apart. Simple, You'll use a wide range of things for it. Of course, you use them on your drill press a lot. This guy right here, there'll be a link for a few different styles. And actually, I'll put a video I did a few years back covering these and the different sizes and what they can handle for material. The link of the video will be right here. There will be a description below for if you want to order one of these. These come in a wide range of sizes, and they're super stout. This is probably about 12 to 14 pounds. And the idea with it is it actually handles... T joints where you can put the metal across like this and continue on if you're working on tables and things like that. And you can do 90 degree joints perfect every time. They work really well. And uh, you can get in all sides to tack weld. So it's kind of a nice thing. It's open on the bottom so you can kind of get down there and spot weld all the corners. They're heavy duty. I have a few of them and I loaned a few out to some friends. They're actually been borrowed them a few months ago. I gotta remember to get that back. But I don't use them all the time, but if you're working with square tubing or circular tubing, they're very helpful for that. Especially if you're building like small things like coffee tables and working on inch and a half material, two inch material. So if you guys are interested, like I said, that video back there, I'll put a link to it. And uh, there's kind of goes over more things on the size of the clamps and their capacities. All right, move on to the last category of tools here. All right because it was about fabrication and welding. We're gonna cover a few things on welding helmets. If you saw the last video, I recommended a welder and different things like that. And that welder was basically something to get started, to get you going, what I thought would be a great welder for somebody that's just starting out. But helmets, there's a wide range of helmets. I've been really happy with this one. I think I got it on sale for about 120 bucks from Harbor Freight. It's got a nice big window on it. I have a Miller I loaned out, an auto dim Miller that I actually loaned out to a friend of mine. That's a decent helmet, but it's really frustrating because that one's not auto on. You gotta remember to turn it on. And half the time you put it down, you come back to it 15 minutes later and you get flashed because the thing auto offs. Uh, this welding helmet's come a long ways. I recommend getting a middle of the road to a higher end one. You can get $40 auto dim helmets at Harbor Freight. I've used them in the past. I don't really trust them with my eyes. At that point, you're almost better off just getting a fixed shade helmet. That's just a set shade. A little harder to start and learn with. But I'd recommend if you get a helmet, try to get something along the Vulcan or higher end than this. Basically, I do a lot of MIG welding. I like mid-thick layer gloves, something like this for MIG welding. If you're doing a lot of stick welding, you might want those really thick ones. You can't feel anything. They're like um, catcher mitts. They're just too damn big for me. Um, I do a lot of TIG welding. Ran the Tillman's. They're fine. But I actually found these guys go on sale for like eight to ten dollars and the Vulcans work pretty well. They're available around here and uh, they're actually a pretty comfortable glove even for doing little bits of grinding and stuff. <clears throat> ear protection, ear muffs are really nice sometimes to have on. Of course, you can pick up some ear plugs, they're well worth having. Safety goggles, of course. These guys, I'll put a link below. If you guys have a plasma table or a plasma torch, these are uh, plasma rated at, I think, shade five or six. I can't really remember. But anyways, I use these for my run my CNC plasma table. If you're doing a lot of grinding, make sure to wear at least a basic paper mask. I'll put a link below for a Miller. 
dust mask. I'm gonna actually pick one of these things up for uh, the Miller ones actually have the filters a little tucked a little closer in. So when you're wearing them under your welding helmet, they don't get in the way. These are good for welding and grinding. And this is simple. This is just an old leather apron that someone at work was gonna throw out because they got too many holes in it. It's kind of nice if you're welding around, say something that you don't want to get a bunch of little BBs and splatter on. You can put this over it, drape it over it. Just simple little things like that. All these things you can pick up and figure out what you like the most. I Like I said, I don't like those really big welding gloves you can't feel anything in. I like these, but of course you can get burned easier through them, so just use common sense. I'm not going to go over a wide range of safety gear and when to use them. That's up for you guys to do your research on. I've gotten people just telling me this and that, I don't know anything, people being brutal about it on one of my videos. The debate on when you should wear gloves and when you're not, I'm not going there, guys. I'm just saying, just use common sense. Think about what you want to do, how are you going to do it, and how to keep all your digits. These things are important, okay? So hang on to those. Protect your lungs and ears and eyes as well. All right, guys, um, I just need to kind of compile the few basic tools that I think are most important to get you started. And I'll compile those and bring you back and finish up the video. So here's the basic tools I highly recommend if you're just starting out around your shop. This section of tools over here is going to cost you around $140. Granted, that is for a nicer set of calipers, the nicer level, and nicer combination square. You can find these tools for a little bit cheaper in some places, but I recommend going this route. You'll be happy with the tools in the long run. Safety gear set on the side, respirator, gloves, and helmet. I recommended the higher end helmet. All these things, safety gear combined, because the helmet was pretty expensive, it's a mid-grade. Uh, all the stuff with the safety gear is going to cost you about $300. And one final thing I want to mention is this whole shot of all this video was actually shot on this welding table I made. You can either buy a basic little welding table, or better yet, you can salvage some bits and pieces and build your own. This is some 3 8 plate I salvaged. This grating over here for this little plasma cutting area was actually some catwalk. My buddy worked on a mill and salvaged some catwalk for it. And I'll put a link to a little video up here on a plasma track I built. It's a pretty cool little plasma track. Hooks up to El Cheapo Plasma Torch and you get some pretty good cuts on that. Doing tool reviews and talking about welders and these tools. I like doing, I like sharing this information with you guys, but my bigger passion is building things. So if you guys uh, are new to my channel, you may have not seen it yet, but I'm building an articulating 4x4 dump truck for my property. I built a quad truck, I have an old broken down quad, put a hydraulic dump on it. I put a Predator engine and a little mini bike that rips around pretty well. And I bought, built a sawmill, many other things. So if you guys are new to my channel, please hit like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. And go back through and check out some of the previous videos I've done. I'm sure you guys will find something you're interested in. All right, until next time, guys. Have fun fabricating. Take care. Bye. Now that was awesome.